It is such an honor to be here with you right now, Monica. Thank you. Now, we got the new album, Monica, Code Red. Yes. Okay, so Code Red, why put out an album at this point? You don't have to. I genuinely love R&B music, and I feel like it's in a state where it's not as respected, it's not as loved, it's not as listened to, and it, in some places just not as acknowledged as it once was. And I don't think that that makes sense. You need some messages in the music. You need the love of the music. You need the music that'll help you get through the hard times, the breakups, the makeups, the... Uh, you, I, it's so many great songs I can think of where I was and exactly what was happening. Timeless music. Yes. To me, it's so important that that be a part of the next generation's life as well. So that's what made me say, you know what, this is a great time. My daughter's of age, you know, where she's uh, enjoying moving around behind her brothers and the boys totally understand what I do. And so they really motivated me to kind of get back. Do they know, though, like what you mean to the game though. My oldest son seems to be a lot more aware at 10. You know, he's 10 years old. Gosh. And so he'll read different things. Or he told me the other day, he said, mom, my favorite song by you is just one of them days. And I told oh him, I said, God. just one of them days is 20. <laughs> and he was like, 20 years old? And then I told him how old I was when I sang it and I let him kind of see some of the pictures from then. And it was real. It was a really dope conversation because for him to still love that song, it just said to me, OK, this is really timeless music. And that's what I always want to make. There's a song on here. All men lie. Yeah. Is that how we feel? All men lie? Mm -mm. No, ma'am. <laughs> that's not how I feel. I think you can't group together or like generalize people totally. But what right. I loved about that song is it was put together by a man. Yes. Timberland put the song together. Yeah. And um, so I thought it was an interesting perspective to come from a guy and then to be singing it back to him while he's saying, if all men lie, then tell me what do women do? What's the difference? Yeah. And uh, it's, it's interesting because it's like a it's like a battle song. Yeah. Not a kind of similar to a battle rap, but we sing it. Yeah. Listen, we're perfect as women. I don't know what anybody thinks, but we are just great individuals. I like the title of that. I also like I Miss Music, which I feel is oh yeah, right now. I Miss Music is very special because it names some of the real innovators and creators of what it is that we call music and the music that we all love. So every line is speaking to people that have really played a major part in, in this industry and just paying respects because a lot of them are gone. Yeah. Now, let's go back a little bit in time because for us growing up, being a fan of yours, when you guys made the record, Boys Mind You and Brandy, there really wasn't any issue. That was just more because it was two girls singing a song about sharing or, you know, fighting over a guy fighting technically. Guy. Yeah, and people still ask to this day, well, who got the boy? There was no boy. It was just a song. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a really great song written by a really great producer and, yeah. and writers. Till this very day, people want to remake it, but no one ever knows who wants to remake it because mm -hmm. it's like you can't mess it up because you guys did such a good job on that song. It was, I feel like for my childhood, it was like a staple. They've asked us to remake it, and I just think some things... Uh, I've always said we can make other songs and do other stuff, but I don't think that song should be tampered with yeah because some moments should just be moment in time like this is it this is what happened this is dope and when you hear it or you or you listen to it or you uh see the video you get that moment in time and everything that it was and embodies i don't think certain things should be touched but i always said they somebody asked me about someone else maybe remaking yeah. it and i feel like if brandy and rodney jerkins who were the real creators of the song i was kind of asked to come on board if they're okay with it, then I would absolutely be okay with it. But I just think it would be really dope to be left as is, yes. you know, and, and we just have a chance to let that moment in time be. It is still one of my favorites because you just feel good when you hear it, even yeah. though it's like a confrontational song to a degree. But I always tell people um, the first time that we met was actually in that session. Oh. Right. 
So all the other stuff. Even the VMAs, nothing happened back. That was after. Yeah. The VMAs were after the song. Yeah. Did I anything just was saying happen? that there could be no beef because the song yeah. was there waiting when I arrived. Right. You see what I'm saying? It wasn't written around an incident. And so once once everything transpired, what started to happen was it became kind of real the more that people talked about it and, and it was set up and then the families and the, you know, my staff, her staff, it got very tense. And when you look back as young as we were, I get it. But what I always tell people now is we don't have an issue. There are no issues at our ages. We're so happy to be in a position to still do what we love. And I think we're both proud of each other sincerely. I think we both want to see the other do well. Another thing that I personally love about you is the honesty. Even though you make such beautiful music, R&B music, you still, you know, you'll let somebody know how you feel about them if they come at you sideways. You know, we see it happening on the Internet when someone might say whatever to you. Does it get exhausting after a while where you're just like, you know what? I really just can't believe you guys are going to ask me this on Instagram. I have my wow moments. Like, wow, who, who really says that? You know, and even if I say something or respond to something, I don't let it um, affect my day. Most times when I say something, once it comes out, it's over. That's been the best therapy for me, though, in every way. And I'm yes. not talking about Instagram. I mean real life. Yeah. I don't hold things in. Yes. So if I feel something, it's coming on out. And then I'm over it. I move right along, you know, because I think people should really treat people the way they want to be treated. You can't just mouth off and then feel like, well, this is the position you asked to be in. Just take it. We're all humans just like anybody else. We bleed the same, cry the same, love the same. We go through a lot of the same things, if not worse, because you're in the spotlight going through it in front of people. So I've, I've never understood that idea like yeah. let me upset this person and maybe because i'm not a negative person when i look and i see someone's photo i click the like button and move along oh it's <laughs> cute or i like this or i like that i just don't I, I, I don't consume myself with things that are negative so i don't speak it a lot yeah but i will tell somebody when they're getting a little too pushy sometimes getting a little yes I thought it was really cute that Shannon was trying to sing your song. I think it is hilarious. It's so sweet because yeah. he's been my biggest supporter, and he's always right there. He listening, and you know he loves music. They train to it. Yeah. They go out to it. You know, it, it it's a part of any most athletes that you talk to. Music is a big part of their lives. So for me, it's always good to have my support system there and have my best friend right there with me. But I also um, enjoy finding out what he likes. Like for years, Dozen Roses was his favorite song. And now Alone in Your Heart has kind of taken over. So when he was singing it, he was so serious. And it's so from I the just, heart. Yes. yes. And so I started uh, singing it with him and I videoed a little bit of it. Oh, it was so cute. Do you ever try to go and play basketball with him? Now I make it clear. <laughs> When I go play, I go to play, like play, play, play. Yeah. Play, just play with you. Yeah. I want to play. I don't want to play. Yeah, like, like for real hit play. the hardwood and put on a jersey. Nah, nah, we ain't uh, no. But I just want to play. Of course. Yeah, yeah so as long as we keep that understood, there's, there'll be no issues. Is it true that he knew you were going to be his wife the minute you guys met? Well, he told me the day we met. And we were actually filming my video, Love All Over Me. So that was when he told me. He told me that day. Were you at all creeped out when he said that? Or were you like, you know what? I'm with you. I wasn't. And a few months later when we married, no cold feet, no second guessing. And what that said to me is that that's the way it's supposed to be. If there is a lot that you don't know and that you don't understand and your feet are getting cold, maybe those are just signs yeah. <laughs> that it's either maybe not time or not the one. That That's just been what I thought since I experienced that feeling because there never was a doubt that it really? was the right thing to do. No, it was never, never any cold feet or a like, yeah, this isn't the right thing kind of feeling. Now, when he said it the first day, I kind of laughed and <laughs> blushed and I thought it was sweet, yeah. but I didn't think he was serious, serious. Yeah. And then he would, he told me later on, he was like, you don't remember I told you? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I, I remember, but. I didn't know he was serious. I mean, he was serious.
He was serious, and he's a man of his word. I think that's one of mm. my favorite attributes about him. If he says he's going to do it, it, it gets done. You know, and just for those who may not know, you've gone through a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. Girl, like, it's a, it's almost unreal. Do you know what I mean? Because you're just like, no, that didn't happen. But it's like, that happened. So yeah. this is to see you in this space, to see you happy, to say, you know, that it was easy with him in the sense of just the connection. Yeah. That, I'm really happy for you. Somebody asked me the other day, like, how did you find? And I was like, I think the key element is I didn't find anything other than myself first. Yeah. You know, when he and I met, it was after me just really preparing myself, the album, my children. You know, I, I was focused on just being the best me possible, and I just was working on me and, and focused on the music and my family, which was just the two boys at the time. So, you know, I was just really in a completely different place. And then it's like, wow. That's why it's genuine. That's why it's sincere. You know, which is why I love, even though I know you don't engage with all the trolls, I love that sometimes you set the record straight. On occasion, in a On very occasion. nice manner. Because I'm not looking to hurt or break anyone down. But you do sometimes want to drop a little... Uh, I always say common sense ain't that common. Mm -hmm. It's like common sense to treat people a certain way. Yeah. And so every time you say something that's negative, then there's something wrong with you, not me. How do you deal with some of, I guess, the negativity? You know, like I, I was just reading the other day about your ex, C Murder's ex talking about you and how the reason they broke up was because of you. <laughs> how do you deal with that? Because you know, as women, sometimes we look at public figures and we don't realize yeah. they still feel pain. That you're just yeah. like, yo, are you serious? Some of it is just laughable. It's so far from the truth. And then also, you have to know who you are and who you are. And the good thing about being around so long is that people know I've always been unashamed and unafraid to let them see the real me. So a lot of stuff they don't buy into, so I don't either. And I stay more focused on the positive than the negative. The negative is just a waste of time. It's a distraction from other things you could be doing that could be great. And that's just something I learned over the years because it doesn't get easier. These types of things happen more and more because the Internet is just free open space for whomever to roam. So I don't pay that stuff any mind. I, yeah. I just, I just get to a point where I know that it would be a disservice to myself and to the people that are watching me and are really rooting for me and wanting to hear the music or wanting to see how I'm doing. Even when, I don't, when I'm not performing, they're checking on me, checking on the kids, to keep paying attention to that would just be backwards. It's nice to hear how you deal with the negativity because young girls get bullied all the time. Well, absolutely, and a part of it is that they start to believe whatever is being said. Yes. That's one of the things that I see. Yes. You know, no, I'm really grateful for the kind of family that I had because self-worth was something that we started talking about at a very young age and always being told how great you are and that you're beautiful and that, you know, the outside isn't the only thing that matters. you got to make sure you're good on the inside, too. Those are things that kids aren't coming up hearing on a regular basis, so they're not armed and equipped with what they mm. need to get through some of this stuff. So, you know, I try to help even in that department as much as possible because you need to know that you are great and you are worthy of great things and, and a certain level of treatment. And also for kids, especially when it comes to bullying, I met this girl outside of my show and her mom said, um, well, she's tried to commit suicide oh. twice because she's been bullied. And, you know, it broke my heart because the reality is is that a lot of times we don't speak up for ourselves yes. when it counts. And when we can't handle something, get the proper help, go to the right person, tell the right person. It doesn't always happen that way. So yeah. the one thing you have to do is really arm your children with that self-worth that they need to, to do what they need to do in, in situations that can be hard. Speaking of kids, now I remember that your son had a situation with a teacher. Yes, yeah, she's a foreign language teacher. So... You know, I think, and she did it with several students. And you this know, putting is her hands on them and doing different things that were just completely out of order before losing her job. This is what's crazy when you hear a superstar say, "This happened to my son." This lets you know anybody and everybody is vulnerable to this kind yeah. of treatment. Yeah, 
I mean, because at the end of the day, she may not have even known I was his mom. He's still a student exactly. in the classroom. Exactly. You know, and a lot of times I think it makes it easier for them when people are treating them like they treat, you know, mm -hmm. everyone that's in the classroom. But in this case, she was treating everyone bad. And it was just not okay. And I hear that in her country that it's the norm to do punishments. You know, I think she was hitting some people over the top of the hands and different things like that. But needless Whoa. to say, that won't work here. Is there any truth to the situation with you and Sierra having a falling out because of All done. All done. We're good and we want, we want people to, to really get over it and let it go. Okay. Family members, sisters, closest of people may have discrepancies, but the things you read and heard were absolutely not true. And when I love you, I love you for life. That's just the way that I'm I'm set up. If you meet the woman that raised me, it makes it all the yeah. more uh it makes it easier to understand, but it's absolutely no issues. You have to move right along. I love that. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think it's important to talk about sisterhood and embracing one another and loving one yeah. another. So yeah, yeah. I'm glad end it, stop it, not true. Yeah. Good. It's, I like it. It just it's just it's not it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Now, I have a, another fan question. Okay. When I was growing up, I remember that you used to cover up your tattoo. Yeah. And you had, you know, the bands on. Was that for that reason? Absolutely. I was really young, and it was a personal choice that I made. But I didn't want people to feel like, okay, well, since Monica did it, let me. Because that was a time and place where that's kind of how it was. People look to us for hairstyles, yes. clothing, and, the khakis, and, yeah, and fashion trends yes. and all of the above. So I just felt like it was a conscious thing to do, you it's know. Very thoughtful. But I remember, like, literally, my friends and I debated. I was like, Nah, nah, nah. It ain't. If it was, she'd show it. She'd show it. And then they're like, No, nah, I think she. Yeah, is. I did on my own time. But yeah. anytime I was in front of the camera, or or at least when I knew I was. It's just like, I don't want that to be the focal point. Yeah. I'm young, and this is a decision that I made. And I don't want that to be, oh, Monica did it, so I'm going to do it too. Nah, let's not do that. I that That's what I mean. It's timeless moments in our life that we remember that you're a part of. I thought it was dope that Nicki Minaj came out to your show. It was. She's always supportive, though. Like, something that people probably don't know is since the very beginning she's always talked about how much she loved my music and you know she loves to incorporate like singing and different things and merging into her raps and she's really dope at it but it's because she lives and loves music as a whole not just rap music yes but r&b music several different types and genres so she would always say you know i grew up listening to you and pretending to be you in the mirror and singing my songs and it's just something i took to heart because a lot of people once they've established themselves especially as huge as she is they forget yeah that somebody paved the way a, a lot Someone of somebody paved you. the way for me and inspired me without whitney there'd be no monica without i mean even i've always loved gladys knight there'd be no monica had there was no you know so the level of respect and love i have for them it's really really meaningful for to me for someone to have that same kind of love and respect for me because 20 years later yeah you put in some work Thank now you. how was it to get that co-sign from whitney houston when you're a teenager getting pulled up to sing with her like watching the video i was just like oh my god yeah well our friendship dictated a lot of what you saw and a lot of the interactions between the two of us you know i grew up loving everything about her and you know i'm a slim tall woman she was a slim tall woman i have a big voice she has a huge magnificent velvety voice you know it just was so many things that drew me to her but and during one of the times that were, were the hardest for me, she came to Atlanta and stayed with me and her and Bob and the family would cook for me and check on me and make no. sure I was okay for days and days, you know. So that is, I was 18 at the time, and that is when our relationship really just took a complete turn from me really just loving her and her being my mentor into a friendship that had a different level of love and a different level of sincerity there. God, that just touched me. <laughs> like cooked for you? Like that's oh, yeah. love. Oh yeah. Like um that's 
even Lily, we one one of the days we went to Lily house and she did the whole spread. And then the next day, like just everybody embracing me and saying it's yeah. gonna be okay. It's not gonna be easy because everybody's watching, but we've all been there and we're gonna help you get through. <sighs> That's so important. That's and I love. try to pay it forward when yeah. it comes to other artists. Like I was I was just telling Nick the other day, if there's anything that you need, don't hesitate to pick up the phone because I got you and in a in a in a sincere way, you yeah. know, that would never change or waver because of industry stuff. Yeah. I feel like now with the industry, unfortunately, that that solid that yo, I'm I'm here for you. I got you. It's good. And the it's men rare. have it a lot. The men yes. have it a lot. We as women, we need more, 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 more of it. We can never have enough of it. The men have it a lot. All the you time. See, they'll make CDs together, four albums together, Remixes go on tour, on top get of money remixes. together. Yep. They'll remix it, flip it. They'll do whatever and be so happy. Yes. <laughs> and there's because there's so much money, we could all get this. All right. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. And basically, where were you during this time? Okay. Okay. When you first heard your song on the radio, in where Atlanta, were you? Um, in Atlanta, riding in the car, and then that same evening at school. I want to say <laughs> I went to shop. Yeah. I went to, sh to shop one of the electives, and he always used to keep the radio on, and I heard it again. Where were you when you first heard you got nominated for a Grammy? I don't recall. Really? I don't recall. I don't. Where exactly were you when Shannon proposed to you? Oh, I was home, and he was overseas. You know, we were on the phone, so yeah. it was very different. But the answer was yes, absolutely. Uh, he was overseas. Uh, they were training over there, and he was like, "This is what it feels like to be without you. I don't want to. I don't want it to be like this ever." And then it, it progressed into the proposal. Gosh, that's that's nice. Yeah, it was extreme. Like phone nice. call or FaceTime or is it? It was actually a phone call because they were in a very odd part of the world at the time. Yeah. So it was actually a phone call. He was like, I can't do it without you. Yeah. Never. Yeah. That's I'm so happy for you, Monica. Thank you. I it's such an honor. Again, your album's out, Co Red. Make yes. sure you get that. It's out tomorrow. So at yes. midnight, do your due diligence and grab it. Please. I, you know, I can't wait to hear All Men Lie. I'm curious to see what that sounds like. Call My Name sounds good. Yes. Just Right For Me, Got Wayne on here. This is a great, I can't wait to see what Timberland did. Oh, yeah. He he created the sound called Opera Noir. That's what he named it. So I'm interested. It, it'll be interesting to see what everyone thinks about it.